And then, you know, a couple months go by and they're like, I don't even know why, why you just didn't give me a therapeutic protocol and why, and we all know that we do the HTMA and stuff. If at all, there are filtering organs that aren't open. We take pictures of people, well, they take pictures, right? If we see heat, stagnant or stagnant heat, or how, or how the circulation is, we will take an opportunity for six, eight weeks to go into there with just some nice supporting supplements that we, your body can actually use. And people are like, I just wasted time. And I'm thinking, no, 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 you don't have anything to compare it to. Welcome to the Clear Skin Chronicles, the podcast that takes you on a journey to uncover the secrets of achieving glowing, acne-free skin. We believe that knowledge is power, and by understanding the root causes of your acne, we can create a solid foundation for long-lasting clear skin. I'm Katie Stewart, registered holistic nutritionist and founder of The Clear Skin Solution, where we help women just like you get to the root cause of their acne. And I'm Chris Brown, Registered Holistic Nutritionist and Program Director in The Clear Skin Solution. Through functional testing, we pinpoint where the body system imbalances lie so we can dive deep into your acne clearing journey. We work virtually with clients to clear up their skin from the inside out and have helped thousands of women worldwide regain their confidence. All right, ready for today? Always ready, Chris. All right. Wait, are you asking me or them? Well, because I'm looking at you, you. <laughs> I'm sure everyone else is ready. I'm going to be inclusive. Is everybody ready? Yes. So we are all ready, Chris. This, is, this a topic. is a big, big topic, the healing crisis. So what we're going to do is, Katie, you went through it. I've gone through it before, but last year you've got a pretty recent experience. So I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. I'm going to ask you to share that in a bit, but I want everybody to understand the body's response to when we start applying holistic concepts, when we start applying lifestyle factors, what really goes on inside the body and all of those wonderful things that we can expect or not expect to that non-linear pathway. And we are always so transparent with clients and with our, even like our, our social community, whatever it is that healing isn't linear. I would never, ever, ever tell somebody like, oh yeah, as soon as you start doing all the things right and you go after the root cause, it's going to be straight A to B. You're going to have no flair. It's going to be an amazing journey. And I actually see this quite a bit with holistic practitioners on Instagram is they're like, oh no, like you'll have, you'll, you'll be able to transition great. Like there's going to be no hiccups. You'll, your skin will clear magically or whatever, like, um, whatever thing they work on, whether it's gut or, or any of those things. I often see a lot of these false promises, which I get really irritated by because this is setting people up for failure because when they, you know, when they go through something like a healing crisis or a die off, they're like, whoa, 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 but what's happening here? I, I was told that this, this wasn't going to go on. You have to remember that the body is different when you're really working to rebalance and repair. You know, sometimes when it's that pill for every ill, it's like, I take this magic pill and my symptom goes away. Like I take this antibiotic and the symptom goes away. There's no back and forth. So in that mindset, we're so used to it being a linear A to B. But when we're rebalancing, recalibrating, repairing, this is where the healing crisis happens. And the healing crisis is a very real thing that happens when the body is trying to get back into that homeostasis, which is essentially a state of balance. We're, we're balancing out those, those weights, right? And a healing crisis has a couple different names. You know, it's often referred to as a Herx, Herx reaction. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as a die-off, especially if you're doing like a candida, candida, candida uh, die-off or a rapid dumping. These are all kind of interchangeable words, but really like that main overall um, overarching one is going to be a Herx reaction slash healing crisis. Mm -hmm. So... The Herx reaction, also sometimes we refer into our community as JHR. It's not new, right? Some it's not new. Say, Where do you come up with that? This is the 1800s. It was coined by a dermatologist. I think it was Australian. Don't quote me on that. Um, later on, I know it went into Germany, all of these different factors. However, when we have this Herx reaction, the thing is, is most people stop whatever, like say from Western medicine, stop their treatment or holistic, stop their protocol because they feel terrible, right? 
they're not going to feel great. They're not going to feel great. You could, what, a, what really a healing crisis is, is a temporary worsening or flare of new symptoms that you never had before, current symptoms you're currently dealing with, or old symptoms you used to have. So it can encompass a wide range of symptoms. Like in, in the acne world, world, it's not just, say, skin that would, could flare. It could be the period pain that you had when you were 14. It could be the extreme fatigue you used to have. It could be like bloat and digestive issues. It could be headaches come back. It could be a brand new symptom you've never even had before. Um, you know, like insomnia. These are all different types of symptoms that can occur during a healing crisis or Herx reaction. And it's going to differ from person to person. It's not like it's a set, like these are the six symptoms you're going to experience. It really depends on the individual, what's happening, the microbes of level of toxicity, the level of inflammation, but it's temporary. It is a temporary healing crisis. The cool thing I just want to add in here is the Herx reaction is often by the medical professional realm oopsie poopsie it's mistaken for allergies to the antibiotics they're on and then they'll be pulled off and put on a new antibiotic realm all while just compounding this root cause issue and it can even it doesn't necessarily have to be physical symptoms as well it can be mental and emotional symptoms. Like maybe you're getting more mood swings. Maybe you have higher irritability. Maybe you're having really intensive dreams or, you know, you're like some people have even said that they've had, um, I don't know what the right word for it. I don't want to say like spiritual awakening because it seems like such a catchphrase. Like I would say insights, more spiritual insights or um, like connections be, even. Yeah. Connections. Connections is a, is a good word. So you can be seeing different mental, emotional, and physical symptoms as you're going through that temporary healing crisis. And Chris, when do we typically see the healing crisis occur and for how long? Ooh. So again, individually based, however, anything between six to eight hours up to usually three days. Hey, Katie, like I, I always look at the three day marker up to 10 days. So it's going to last about 10 days, like a common flu. However, sometimes you also see somebody have fantastic first one or two weeks and then bam, hit a wall, hit a wall, energy tanks, mood tanks. You know, what did you do to me? Panic sets in. They're like, this isn't working. This isn't working. Chris, why are you trying to kill me? I think those comments have come out before. <laughs> well, because it's not fun. Like I want to be super transparent going through a healing crisis isn't fun because you, you automatically, as soon as something, I don't even want to say starts to go wrong. As soon as you start to feel a flare of a symptom, you're like, oh my gosh, I've done something wrong. This isn't working. I need to stop. And what happens is then you then, if you get that all of a sudden stop, you go right back to where you were in the beginning. And then you volley between the beginning and between getting a flare. And you never work through that flare. You never work through that temporary healing crisis to get the other side because you're panicked that you've done something wrong. You haven't done something wrong. And as you know, as not fun as it is to experience it, it's actually a good sign that your body is responding to the work that you're doing. Yeah, it's not fun, like you said. And we do, this is why working with a professional, like even for myself, when I'm next leveling that yourself, right? Uh, how often do we even share, right? It, 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 we need somebody at that same level to understand what's going on because what happens is when things start to die, like opportunistic bacteria, even by eating um, complex carbohydrates, like these types of things are reducing sugar. That's enough to do that knee jerk reaction for this to occur, right? Because what happens is your body's used to a certain level, like the bacteria, the cultures, all of these you're things. You're a good are host. Oh, you're a good host. You're beautiful. I, I, you know what I always say to clients? You are an all inclusive resort. For these fungi, these yeast, the bacteria, like even viruses, like for me, Parasites, viral issues, they're anything. like loving it. Oh, it's like a five, you. five star, all you can eat buffet, like a sandals, all inclusive adults only. Like, are you adding that to cart? Cause I'm, I'm fine with that. So you do that. Well, <laughs> Chris is like, yeah, we can, we can do that. But this is what I wanted to say. <laughs> What it is, it's a natural body response. It's really triggered 
by a sudden increase of endotoxins, endo meaning in and toxins meaning garbage, right? So toxins that are inside the body from those cultures, it throws it into the bloodstream, out comes rashes, out comes itchy skin, acne, you know, I'm having the worst, it can last even weeks, depending on how it goes. Here's some, here's some cool things. What if, hey, Katie, how do I just common symptoms? that I see inside the clear sin solution. Like I can probably nail these pretty quick. Yeah. Because like, again, we are full transparency when we go through the more therapeutic protocols with our clients, whether we're, you know, doing a bigger like gut cleanse and gut reset, or maybe we are, you know, killing off that opportunity, opportunist bacteria, the candida, the SIBO. Maybe we're doing more of like that metabolic style detoxification, or we're doing, you know, the lymph going after the liver, lymph and kidneys and flushing those out these are the ones that will trigger that healing crisis. And we always forewarn you that this is going to, this will most likely happen. These are the things that you could experience. So making sure that in that proper mindset. So Chris, what are some of the really common ones that we see for acne sufferers going through the clear skin solution as they work through their, their more therapeutic protocols? Well, well, class, I'm going to go skin issues. Even if you didn't have skin rashes or eczema or, you know, dermatitis, it doesn't mean you're going to get it by the way. Like these are not all cases. However, things like that don't occur if they weren't already kind of there, right? Flu-like symptoms, hands down. So fever, chills, oh my gosh, I've caught little Johnny's infectious thing because his mom brought him over. No, chances are this is where we are. Nausea. Diarrhea or constipation, bloating, moodiness and irritability. Of course, (laughs) nobody ever gets that. Fatigue. This is a big one. Fatigue and energy, same together. Headaches and brain fog, I like to kind of encompass together. Even sometimes, I know for me, joint pain and cold sores are mine, hands down. And the reason we have to understand is when these toxins are circulating into the bloodstream, the immune system has to go, oh, hello, garbage. Now we have to get you out. Anything filtering not working, and it's going to again shunt it to the skin. So really what it does is it creates inflammation in the body. And that's what creates this Herx-like reaction. And yeah, we generally will see this with our acne clients happen anywhere from like day three to what, day seven, day 10. Yeah. So it's like saying six to eight hours. I've seen it. Not usually, but day three is the golden goose. That's why, you know, I have an expression three plus one, no matter what I do, it's like three days plus one. If I don't see it by the plus one or we'll add supplements, we'll take them for three days, add one. Um, I'm pretty big on that three plus one. Um, so long story short is, but up to 10 days or up to 14, same thing like the flu. And if your immune system is already compromised, whether it's an autoimmune or just, you haven't been feeling good for years, it can push that out. You can have residual, like a lingering cough, a lingering cold, acne, cystic acne that just doesn't want to go down. It's the healing of the body because the inflammation response is still so heightened. Absolutely. And generally we'll see it clear up anywhere from seven to 21 days. Cause again, it's temporary. The body is working through this. It's cleaning house. It's flushing. And it's almost like your body's rejoicing. Like, Oh my gosh, thank you. We're getting rid of all of this stuff that I've been trying to get rid of for years, but haven't been able to. So this is really what it is and why it happens before we move into, you know, our stories, specifically the one that I dealt with last year, anything else you want to add to those two, Chris? I think that's good. Uh, I'm just going to say if you do have SIBO, so small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, expect it, hands down. Rarely have I seen somebody not react. If or candida. That. Candida, absolutely. I say SIBO more, for sure more, but there is a lot of candida overgrowth that we see going through a die off. Oh, yeah. And, and guess what? The bacteria that's supposed to be in the large intestine and packed in there, it's made it all the way up up to the small intestine, it could be, you know, interfering with the stomach, these types of things. So this is a bit of a bigger, this is why you get the gas and the bloat and you can't eat the onions and the cruciferous vegetables and all of these things, because it just doesn't make you feel good. So just know that they're die off symptoms. We get in there, we start working with the body. Conservative approaches tend to win over the hard fast. 
that's something I just need. One thing before you get into your story, because it is like amazing. <laughs> not amazing for me. Well, not amazing for you, but, but I it, love yeah, it because it really showcases how it happens. Even you panicked for half a second. It was just a half a second. And you were like, wait a minute. I love this. So, but before we go into that, the one thing I just wanted to kind of touch upon is I know things that we can lessen and we'll talk about like after that. My my thing is, is we have people coming in eating a, a beautifully balanced nutritional. Clean. So oh, wonderful. Like better than me. Better than you. I don't you. think Chris, that's, that's. <laughs> just Chris kidding, is just, next okay, level. Fine. <laughs> right. But we are eating extremely well. Like they know their stuff, right? And then, you know, a couple months go by and they're like, I don't even know why, why you just didn't give me a therapeutic protocol and why. And we all know that we do the HTMA and stuff. If at all, there are filtering organs that aren't open. We take pictures of people. Well, they take pictures, right? If we see heat stagnant or stagnant heat or how, or how the circulation is, we will take an opportunity for six, eight weeks to go into there with just some nice supporting supplements that we, your body can actually use. And people are like, I just wasted time. And I'm thinking, no, 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 you don't have anything to compare it to. If I had to go into this protocol with you, you would probably be so inflamed that we're, we're going to add six, eight, nine months onto the end of this because you, we didn't give the body an opportunity to respond first. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Even if you come in eating a super clean diet to wherever you're working with, I, I never want you to come in like, I eat so well. That is not like, if you have acne, if you have a symptom and you're eating well, there's still issues on underlying and we can't go heavy and hard all at once because the dietary component is only one thing. And we need to be looking at how long have you been eating this way? Have you ever done anything to support the body at a deeper level in a correct way based on your lap, your functional test results? Because if you, you know, you just started eating healthier, even within the last four or five years, like Chris, even me, who has been a holistic nutritionist for years, has been 15 years well into this journey, went through a massive healing crisis when I was going through therapeutic treatments with my functional doctor last year. And so if I had gone into it with the attitude of, oh, I, I don't, I know I don't need to take this slow. I don't need to take this slow because I eat so well. I would have been setting myself up for failure and setting myself up for a lot of suffering because I jumped the gun. It's, we, we always want, we always want the results quicker. We always want to do the things quicker, but the body really relies on foundation and you need to be consistent and give yourself time to incorporate these things in order to have that strong foundation to be able to put the walls on and then put the roof on and then go in and paint the house. Also, when we look at the more is better, I love it, right? If I like, I want to come into a new house, I want everything. I already want the blinds up because we are a want society. This is why we have prime. This is why we don't have commercials. This is why, and that society, that societal expectation drives us to want more in our healthcare. Oh, and you know what I'm going to say? Here's the thing. You know what we do different inside the Clear Secret Solution? Because I get this all the time. What makes you different, right? <laughs> and I always put a tone on it, right? Because uh, that's how, because that's how I do it. Like when I'm out there and I'm shopping for blinds, what's make what makes you different, right? What makes us different? But I love it. You better be asking those questions. That's what helps that process. But what makes you different? What makes us different is we don't follow the symptom trail. We take it as information and we go back to the hosting organs. We go back to the horse hosting sites. We go back to how the flow is in, this, in, in the entire body. And we work together as a team to say, what is the best pathway for this individual at this moment? And we stay in that moment. You know how I always say today, tomorrow, yesterday? Well, that's great. You want to be in tomorrow but I got to keep pulling you into today. So just buckle up. Let's go. And we're going to do that journey. So tell us, Katie, tell us about your reaction. Yeah. And you want to, I shared this with the clients when I was, uh, you know, a little bit, maybe a few months into going through with it. I, I think I did a pop-up training or something on it. And they were, we were so appreciative of it because they could really see that it happened. Like a healing crisis happens to everybody. It's not just, not just them that are suffering with a healing crisis or going through it. And I shared about it. I don't know. Did I share about it on Instagram? I can't remember. 
Who knows? Well, I know Maybe. we talked about it a little bit on the podcast. We because did. Because you had the Herx reaction and you're like, Chris, can, can you just please talk? Because I can't move my lips. So for me, I've dealt with severe chronic debilitating pain for 20 years since I was about 14, 15. And, you know, it, it, in the beginning, it was just low back pain and low back spasms. And then it moved into sciatic like pain. And then it moved into like burning nerve pain in both glutes and both hamstrings. And by 2019, the pain was so severe that I, I couldn't even stand. As soon as I woke up in the morning, I go brush my teeth, the pain hit. And I would be in tears just trying to like get my kids lunch together. And by the, like, I would have to, luckily I worked from home and I would have to lay down on the couch. I actually bought a um, TV dinner tray for my laptop so that I could work. And I would work there and I would be laying down the whole time. Or my husband would like create a little table at the end of our like chaise or whatever. I couldn't stand long enough to make dinner for my family. I couldn't even sit at the table to eat dinner with my family. And it just kept getting worse and worse. Like leaving the house for me, anytime we got invited to like our friend's house, I would be having to take, you know, I would have to plan. Out, okay, I, I got to take the, this for box set here. Six hours later, I have to take this. I got to make sure I have my CBD oil in. I got to bring my creams. I got to do this. And this was just to leave the house to go to a friend's house for dinner. Not like, you know, a, a big, huge, elaborate thing. And at the same time, you know, I'd also dealt with, um, you know, a long, long time of chronic fatigue syndrome where I was so insanely tired, like, if you've ever been pregnant, you know, that level of tired that you are when you're pregnant, like that would have been a cakewalk compared to what I was experiencing. Um, you know, I was really dizzy all the time. I was getting lightheaded. Um, I, I forget what some of my other symptoms were now, but like I was for how clean I was eating, I was still experiencing these symptoms. I'm like my, you know, I'm taking all the right things and doing all the things. And I would, wouldn't take no for an answer. I had seen over conservatively over 50 different medical doctors, practitioners, everybody had a solution or they didn't have a solution and none of it worked. And I remember seeing a naturopath earlier in 2023 and her saying, this sounds very viral. Like, have you ever been tested for underlying viral issues? And I was like, no, I haven't. She goes, all right, let's do it. So I did a blood draw that we sent to Germany. Um, it was a very extensive blood draw, but like when you're in so much pain, I was willing to do anything. Like I was like, I'm literally going to sell my soul to the devil because this is, I can't function. My whole life has been taken away from me. I can't lift my kids. I can't play with my kids. I can't go to concerts. I can't do anything. So it came back that I was riddled, absolutely riddled with Epstein-Barr as the big one, um, Coxsackie, VZV, and echoviruses. So all herpes simplex viruses. And, you know, I, I had, um, I had gotten in, in high school, my high school boyfriend had mono. And I, since he had mono, I ended up with cold sores and because it's the herpes simplex virus. So thanks, Dave. I now had this. <laughs> Ooh, we got a name too. Well, no, thanks, we're, Dave. <laughs> we're still friends. He's lovely. He, uh, he's lovely. We're still friends. We're in the same friend group. His wife is amazing. So, such a sweet little baby. So I say this in a joking ter term. And then I, 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 I contracted this virus most likely in high school and it was lying dormant in my body. And Epstein-Barr waits for um, waits for like a lowering of defenses, like a psychological trauma. And in 2019, I had two late pregnancy losses. I'm really going into detail. I didn't mean to, I had two late pregnancy losses, which massively depleted my physical, mental, emotional health, psychological defenses down the pain took over. So fast forward, I realized I had these viral issues and I needed to start fixing them. So in the beginning, I was working with one of our naturopaths that we use here on the Clear Skin Solution, Dr. Lawn. He was wonderful. And as soon as we, we like, as soon as we started our protocol of what I was going to do, what I, I eased into it, you know, I had some um, immune modulating support. I had some viral support. Chris, you remember within like the first three days, I had only added in one of the supplements. My face exploded in cold sores that I have the worst cold sore outbreak I've ever had in my life. And I've only I usually ever gotten one, maximum two. I had eight cold sores at once pop up. And in a 10 day period, three week period, I had 14 different gross big cold sores that none of my remedies were working. It took over my whole lips. Like literally my lips, one, one giant cold sore. They were cracked and bleeding and painful. I had to like slide food in my mouth because I couldn't open up the slits on my mouth. I took photos of it because I had rashes that wrapped from the top of my like um, nose where my eyebrow meets it all the way under my eyes behind my ears had rashes. Um, 
I was getting some cystic pimples pop up a lot. Like I probably had three or four cystic pimples pop up on my back, a couple pop up on my chin. Um, I was getting really bad headaches and migraines. Frank will attest to my irritability. God bless that man. <laughs> and um, like I was getting diarrhea, constipation, and I was not feeling good. And in my brain, I didn't panic. I When I get started getting these symptoms, I thought, oh my God, yes, this sucks. And I am so happy because this is a Herx reaction. I was like, we've nailed it. We've nailed it on the head. I'm dealing with a viral infection. We've angered the viruses. They're trying to fight back. My body's going through, you know, the Herx reaction. It's working and it's not fun, but it's working. And I think you said, die, you little bleep die. <laughs> I In excitement. But it doesn't, it doesn't, right? but it doesn't stop there because that was just the beginning of my journey. The healing crisis occurred again, where I started working with my functional medicine doctor in Toronto, uh, back in August of last year. And I started doing IV ozone therapy where, um, you know, they draw about 250 milliliters of blood out. It gets mixed with ozone. It goes pumped back into your, your body. And this helps kill off, you know, bacteria, virus, fungus, whatever it may be, mold, and it was really flushing. So I was doing 10 sessions of this plus high dose vitamin C plus uh, um, an IV phosphatidylcholine, big time liver support, plus this detoxifying whole cat sauna. Like these were five, six hour treatments, um, um, two times a week for five weeks. Then I started going weekly. And again, uh, when I added in that next level of my treatment where I was getting uh, SOT therapy to go after those viruses specifically, the day, I would say the second day after my SOT therapy, I had never experienced brain fog like this in my life. I couldn't form sentences. Words couldn't like, weren't coming out of my mouth. I, I couldn't think. My migraine was so bad for three days that I was just in tears. I was unbelievably tired. Like even just getting home from that appointment, I was so tired by the time I drove two hours back from Toronto that I was like, I need to go to bed. My mood swings were bad. My digestion was off again. And again, I was having those cold and flu-like symptoms. I felt achy. I felt under the weather. I had a sniffly nose, a bit of a sore throat. And again, I was like, thank God, here is the Herx reaction. And even there, like it didn't just stop at that one because these are really intensive treatments I've been doing. The SOT therapy effects or are, are, can kind of take about three to four months to integrate into the body before you do another round. And maybe it was like, what, Chris, six weeks after where I was like having a borderline meltdown with my mood swings and my, um, like all of my symptoms flared. And I was like, Chris, I need 30 minutes of your time this week. Please come and talk me off the ledge. And she was like, yeah, your Herx reaction. What, have we what, have, what are we realizing here? That you've awoken the beast in your body and we're going through that multiple Herx like reaction. I'm like, oh, I know I just needed the moral support today. And that's me who is an extremely healthy eater who takes, who does all of the things and works out. And, you know, it, it happens to everybody because the body is finally able to release and go through that, that healing crisis. How did I do remember, Chris? Did I share all the things? Well, no, it's just, and that's the circulating endotoxins, right? The fact is, is the difference is when your, your treatments are like next level treatments, they are, they're intense, but they were needed for what you you had to do. So what it did is it's flooding everything at once. When we're talking candiasis, we're talking like seven to 10 days. When we're talking your level, we're talking three, four months. Yeah, months at a time. Months, because the blood system has to have enough of the chance to keep populating without the endotoxins, knowing how to get them out, knowing how to detoxify without going through therapeutic treatments. So absolutely. We, again, even for you, you're like, Hey, Chris, can, let's chat this out. Right. You all, you know, all the things, but when we don't have somebody that is of like that can chat or somebody to go to, you have a bunch of doctors, we can go and use them. Um, but sometimes we just need to hear that it's okay. Yeah. Cause that's the thing is I'm a practitioner. I know these things happened and I still needed a mindset check because it's not fun to experience, right? Like the mood swings and you know, it, it really just, it worsened every symptom. Like my, I really struggle with my mental health with depression and anxiety and PTSD from past traumas. And that even got like that even flared up. That was big. And it was big. It was like, that, that was, was probably big. the biggest one. 
Um, and I was so on edge and like, literally, you know, do you ever have that happen where like, there's just so much going on that like you drop a spoon and you just lose your cool. You're like, that's it. And people are like, ah, uh, it was just a spoon. You're like, it wasn't just a spoon. It was all the things. And it- they don't understand the, the compounding effects, right? You don't understand what somebody's going through. We can never express fully what we're going through. Remember last episode, I was talking about expressing ourselves and then correlating it to the feeling. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right there what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it really is like, right? It's these, this temporary healing crisis and I would never stop while I'm going. I, I was thankful that I, I knew that's what it was. And I kept going because like, I, I don't want to stay in this pain and I don't want to go back to the beginning. This and in all fun. transparency, how many times did you think I'm just going to quit this because this is BS? Oh, absolutely. There've been times where, where I got fresh, even me who teaches this for a living. I was like, this isn't going fast enough. I need to be better yesterday. I'm in so much pain. And I was like, Katie, it was like, I was, I was having the angel devil talk to myself. You're like, Katie, you know, this, you know, it takes time. And it's like, no, it needs to go faster. So I, I remember talking to, uh, I had a check-in with, with our, my naturopath, Dr. Alon, and he, he was, I love when he says this, Katie, isn't this a good reminder of what your clients go through? I'm like, yeah, thanks, Dr. Lalonde. Didn't need to hear that right now. Be quiet. There's a little devil one that you're just like, oh, I'm sorry. What's that on my shoulder? Ping. Yeah. Bye. But it, it, I, I, I kind of giggled when he said that because, it, again, it really did help remind me because I hadn't done a healing crisis in, in over a decade. And it really reminded me of how not fun it is, how challenging it can be, and not to stay stuck in it, to keep going to the other side and to have that support system. So now that it's set. Mindset. Mindset. It, this is a, this is within about two weeks, this one plummets to the, like, you feel like you were scraping yourself. Like you are in a desert dragging yourself like a cartoon. I'm probably dating myself because I was like Looney Tunes, but I don't love Looney Tunes anymore, but pulling yourself to that beautiful pool of water only to realize it's a mirage. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. That is the Katie level of the Herx reaction inside the clear skin solution. It's not a mirage. There's water, right? So thank goodness for that. And not for all clients, because we find underlying things that have gone undiagnosed in, we probably find it in about eight to 10% of clients where, you know, uh, you know, we have coaching calls and stuff like that. And I'll, I kind of give Katie like a summary of the summary and I go, like, I can't breathe. And I'm like, this person, they have underlying and I can't let it go. And the coaches are like, why are you still on that? I'm like, I can't let it go. And then sure enough, I'm like, push, 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 push. And I push the coaches and then they push their clients. And then what happens? And well, that's the there. thing is, you know, like it's not within our designation to diagnose people with any type of disease. So if we see possible underlying factors that could indicate an issue in this area is how I'm going to word it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Clever like that. It is we will really push them to like, hey, can you get your doctor to send you to the specialist? Hey, can you ask them to run this test and then see what they say? And we've had a number of clients where we've really advocated for them to go and get these tests and their doctor has then diagnosed them with, you know, different autoimmune conditions, with different hormone disorders, with, you know, all of these Two different- clients alone with lupus. Mm -hmm. Like, what are the yes. odds? What are the odds? And what they have the been living with my this heart? for- years if not decades going undiagnosed not knowing what was happening to their bodies and it's not saying that we know it all the thing is is there's little things about the body remember i said what we do different is when we kind of like oh my gosh you have a flare and then as practitioners we're like oh my gosh you have a flare right and we're no. we're like yay and they're like no <laughs> they're no like, that's, why are you what yaying wrong with you Stop i yaying. tell clients all the time listen when i start smiling inappropriately it's because it means it's working and I do it. You know that I'm I like, know. I'm like that. You're like, why are I you feel like inappropriately like, is... isn't the right word that gives like a bad, bad connotation. And well, they're telling me a story and they're telling me about their symptoms and they're really upset. And, and I'm you're smiling. smiling. You're like, that's yes. pretty inappropriate, right? Yeah, okay. That's true. But I don't mean it inappropriate as in that. I mean, I'm smiling because your body is doing exactly what it's supposed to. Your body's showing up for you. I am in such love at that moment that I start smiling and I'm like, oops, I'm smiling because I catch myself on camera because through Zooms, right? What I, What's interesting as well about the healing crisis is some people really discredit the healing crisis or the Herx reaction. But if you go and look at top functional doctors, top naturopathic doctors, top, you know, 
really big name people in the health and wellness space, you will see they all discuss the healing crisis and the Herx reaction. Even so, when I was going to see my functional doctor, she's a medical doctor, you know, taking a functional approach. The, the clinic even said, I love when they're like, okay, Katie, just as a reminder, when we're going through this SOT, you're probably going to experience a healing crisis. And I was like, okay, like, I know, just give it to me, send her over. And he's like, you may experience X, Y, and Z. And I was like, yep, I know. So even going to the, my functional doctor, they're reminding their, their clients and their patients that, Hey, this is, this is going to happen. It's not going to be great, but it's normal. It's normal and it will pass as temporarily. So now that we've talked extensively, what is it? How does it feel? My experience with it, what we see with clients, let's talk through how we can really lessen, not get rid of it altogether, but we can lessen the intensity of the Herx reaction. And again, this will differ from person to person. We have clients who experience very mild Herx reactions and clients who experience ones that are not so fun. When we want to lessen it, that is when we do the assessment on the intake with the client. We take all the information and then we say, what's the best pathway? And again, remember that client, I said, why, why I could have done this and I, I'm three months behind now and I can't believe this. And I'm thinking, ah, no, no, right? We have to make sure that there's heavy metal clearance. We have to make sure there's filtration clearance. We have to make sure your body's absorbing. If your body's not absorbing, and you go through a detox, now you have none of none. Because that's essentially what you're doing is when you're going through a therapeutic protocol, like what I was doing with my different therapies, you're going through detoxification, a heavy detoxification. And just like if you look up detoxification symptoms, it's going to explain, explain the healing crisis. Yeah. And supplements are added alongside to either bind push, we don't like to push too much in the beginning, bind, push, or nurture, right? So we don't even look at heavy supplementation at the beginning. We look at how we can make these small changes, like even journaling. To prepare the body. Right? Journaling. Get in there. Tell me what your foods are eating. I'm going to drip you out next level information every single week, small, small, tiny things. So you can make those changes without being in the overwhelm. And then when your body starts to get better energy and better mood and bowels, what about sleep? Who doesn't love it? Love it. Like top priority sleep. In my next life, I've already signed up for sleep too. So, and no children. Can I, can I sign up and for a sleep? dog? Yes. I, I leave yeah, no children, dog. All the dogs. All the, All dogs. the dogs. That's, okay, that's no, the, one. <laughs> one dog. I love the dogs. But really making sure that you are setting yourself up for success. So when the body is going through this heavy detoxification, healing crisis, whatever you want to call it, it's your body's doing a lot of work. You don't see it, but it's, it's running over time. You know, there's people running on treadmills uphill, like stuff is going on and it requires a lot of energy from your body. So you need yes. to rest more. Yes. Rest yes. number one, whether that's sleep more, maybe take a nap, maybe, you know, cancel your 6am Pilates class. Maybe you don't go for a 2K run that day. Like you really want to conserve as much energy as you can in order to let your body clean house. That would be a really big one. And making sure you're drinking enough water and eating enough food. Okay, three. Sleep, water, food. Sleep, water, food. Don't forget those. The thing is, is when you go through a, a flu-like symptom experience or a Herx-like reaction, the immune system is like, right? It's like, that little child at the store that doesn't get their toy when we're, you know, shopping for Christmas, which I saw. And I'm just like, give me five minutes with your child. Okay. I'm parenting with Chris. Me one one. Child. Um, yeah. So when it was like that, but it is so heightened, right? So we have to step back and we have to support that immune system first. You can't just do all the things. What happens when you have a flu or indoor virus? You tend to not want to eat. And you're like, oh my God, Chris and Katie on episode two, they said this. No, what about nourishing water as in or nourishing broths? Or, right, warm water, ginger tea if tolerated and we don't already have excess heat. These types of things. Mm -hmm. So that rest is resting digestion, resting through sleep, and resting your mind. Yes. Oh, that's 
That that's the whole of the ugly right there. Who want? I was like, sign me up for the rest of the mind. Is there a light switch I can I can install in my brain? That'd be fun. No, we even get in our heads, don't we? You oh, and I. Oh God, I live in there. I need. I'd been clotting my way to get out. But giving your your brain the not overworking, like not having like setting for me, it's like setting boundaries. Like what did you and Paige and our lovely uh, assistant Megan do in a meeting last like last month? You were guys like Katie, you're taking Slack off your phone. Take Slack off your phone, and you like watched me delete it, and I didn't re add it. And that was a really big boundary that you guys forced me to set, but made me. We so call much- it intervention. <laughs> Yeah, intervention. So I removed Slack. And if you don't use Slack, it's like a, a company communication app. But maybe for you, it's your email. Maybe you need to take your email off your phone. And you're like, what? sorry, no, like that's, that's not going to happen. Maybe you take your email off your phone. Because if you're someone who's sitting there at night and you flip through your emails and you start responding to them because they're, you know, whatever, those emails can wait. They can wait. Yep. Maybe if you're like an on-call surgeon, don't turn off your pager. Like that's kind of key. But because oh, I, I was going to say nothing is <laughs> Good an emer- nothing's an emergency unless you're an on-call surgeon, different story. But we really want to be setting those strong boundaries of when it's time for me to rest, it's time for me to rest. I don't need to be answering all the emails. The laundry will be there tomorrow. I can empty the dishwasher another time. Like you don't always have to be go, go, go. Because I don't know about anyone listening, but for me, I, I feel really lazy when I'm not doing something. Like even when I am in chronic pain, I'm having a flare of my pain. I'll try to be like fluffing the pillows and doing a little laundry. My husband's like, can you just not like, can you just go lay down because you're, you're just making it worse. Yeah. And that's a sodium potassium interconnection that's huge in that proton pump and how things are exchanging into your cells just from a geek perspective, because Katie, I know there's some geeks that listen, they told me. So just want to up level it. Chris has a geek club. I'm going, I'm going to give you a little example here, right? Because it's, it's, I'm watching Steve do this right now. Okay. Steve, I know you're listening. So yeah, obviously I don't know what I'm talking about because I'm like wife takes precedent over anything else. Um, so Steve has been merging into more office work, right? He's been enhancing his skill development. The company he's with is lovely and they're they're doing that. And I mean, hey, for Steve, this is a big deal because he didn't finish college. He didn't care for school. Like it was, so this is like a big grand thing and he's willing to take it on. It's a huge learning curve. But now the company's like, okay, all of these people report to Steve. And Steve's now taking phone calls at six o'clock. We're driving home from family things and the phone comes through the car and boom and boom and boom. And I'm watching him come home later and later and later. And now, and this guy still gets up at two 30, three 30, four 30 in the morning. Okay. So he's running about 12 to 14 hour days. Anyways, here's the difference. When you are doing a job that is so systematic, you don't tend to use a lot of mental energy, but he's learning new now. He's like putting out fires. We call him office, Steve. I told him the other day in a text because he wasn't very responsive to my text. I'm like, I don't think I am fond of office, Steve. We're going to have to talk about boundaries, right? So what I'm saying is he's using a different aptitude. He's even said he feels mentally fatigued sometimes. He, his sleep hasn't changed in the fact of he's allowing himself more sleep because he can. He still has to go do this before he goes into the office, right? All of these cofactors. However, now in his family time, out comes more work time. So all, in that whole schematic, think about people when they start changing their routines, changing their diet. Steve doesn't know how to juggle it because he hasn't had the opportunity because it hasn't set one, the boundaries into the habits. So those are the things that I just want to share with everybody is when we don't have that set mindset, that set understanding the learning that too can go and uh, react that Herx reaction. Absolutely. So you know, really giving your, I also want to remind people, just give yourself grace and patience. Like you're doing a lot, your body's going through a lot, you know, rest as much as you can with whatever is happening in your lifestyle and like really be kind to yourself and go back to the, you know, we often spend so much time bullying our own selves in our brain saying, 
you can't do this. You'll never be able to do this. You're not worthy. You're not lovable. You're ugly. You're this, you're that. Like we're bullying ourselves so much. So really start to also catch yourself when you're really starting to get into that mindset and speak to yourself like you would speak to your best friend or that you would speak to your child. How would you speak to them if they were going through this and and speak to yourself that way as well? And the last one is really making sure you're easing into things. Again, this is why we do so much prep work for our clients in the clear skin solution when they're, before they go through protocols, because you don't want to just jump right in. Even if like prime example, me, holistic nutritionist does all the things, still had a massive Herx Herx reaction, even though I really eased into it. So this is, you don't want to skip. You don't, you really want to make sure your body prepared in a really good way to explain this is I'm really big on sport analogies because one of fun fact about me, I love sport documentaries. Like I don't like sports, even though I worked for Hockey Night in Canada for 14 years, worked for the Thai Cats for three years. Like I've lived in the sports world for a long time. Don't like sports at all. But I really love sport documentaries because they can really showcase the mindset that it takes to achieve goals. And I like watching them because you'll see so much. One of my favorites was the McGregor Forever documentary. I had no idea, like really, I've heard of him, but didn't know who he was before this. His mindset's incredible. And it was really awesome to watch. So this is why I like them. And this is why I'm going to use a sports analogy here. Is when you have, say, you know, a high school athlete, right? He's a football player and decides to join the NFL. Do you think he just goes right from his last game of football and goes into his very first NFL game without doing any prep work, without watching game tapes, without running drills, without running plays, without getting to know the team, building camaraderie, getting to know the coaches, getting to this, laying the foundational groundwork before he plays his first NFL football game? Because if you didn't, you weren't going to do that great. You know, you wouldn't know what was happening. You wouldn't know the drills. Your body wouldn't be prepared. You wouldn't have the right muscle mass or the right whatever. Need. Again, again, not a, not an athlete, so I don't know. But you can get the get the idea. And he's going to go into that game so much better because he's prepared. And if he had had the mindset of, oh well, you know, I'm I'm the king of you know I'm the king of high school. I'm I'm an amazing athlete. I don't need to go and do this prep work. I'm just gonna I'm gonna you know play PlayStation all summer and I'm I'll see you guys at uh, NFL game one. That wouldn't get you very far. And I want you to take that same that same thought process of even if I'm a really healthy eater, really healthy liver. So if you had taken the mindset of, oh, I'm super healthy. I, you know, I walk, I do the things, I take a probiotic, I drink celery juice, whatever. I don't need to do the prep work. Then you're setting yourself up for failure and you're so, I don't want to say failure, you're setting yourself up for a really tough struggle because you're skipping over that really foundational prep work that needs to be in place before you go in to these therapeutic protocols in order to lessen the Herx reaction. Because if you don't, your Herx reaction can be much, much worse. The other thing I want to add is where people feel they don't have to prep on the other end of the spectrum is the people that feel that they're doing all the right things and that they're ready. And then they don't realize that there is still more prep. And then they can force themselves again into that herc like reaction. Here's the difference. The people that don't do the prep and just like, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to rough it out. Kind of like a type, like, yeah, maybe we can do that sometimes. Right. The thing is, is when they get it, they're usually like, oh, dang, the people on the other end that are doing all the things and think that they're ready and advanced and, you know, maybe we're not doing it accelerated enough for them when they go into it the mind frickery, the brain fog, like they get it almost 10 times worse, I find, because they were like, I'm ready, I'm ready, ready. And then then boom, I wasn't ready. And then the judgment comes in a little bit harder. Where the other side, yeah. Like the mindset really is, again, if you haven't listened to our mindset episode in last season, I think it was episode four or five. It was like the acne, it, acne it's called the acne clearing game changer. It's one of the first episodes we did. It's a really important one to listen to. And we find in our experience, that's the the mindset's the one most clients skip. They're like, I don't need this. Skip, not going to do. And we have seen borderline miracles happen when people actually embrace the mindset. And not just like, you know, it's not just about thinking positively and doing this and doing that. It's setting yourself to be in the proper mindset, to be in the repair mode. So you're like, okay, my body is healing. I need to remember this. It's not always going to be rainbows and butterflies. In fact, it's probably going to be uphill a lot of the way. And I am doing this so I can feel better. Mm -hmm. And utilizing somebody that knows what you're going through. I mean, 
our, when we write protocol, I'm very sticky. So when I write protocols, I mean, we, we do our own protocols. It's not like we just like, oh, this looks really good. I'll take a portion of this from this and I'll take a portion. No, we don't. We look at the body systems. Again, there's another little nugget. We look at the body systems and we systematically put something together. If somebody has testosterone, I'm not going this way. I'm going to go this way. If somebody has this, I'm going to go this way. Still have to get to the same root cause of where we're trying to get in. But there has to be those changes so that her reaction isn't so dominant. And you can go through a detox of, say, the gut, and you can go through a detox of the liver and still have Herx reactions. Both times. Like I just explained, when I started my, my viral protocol and then when I did my next up-level treatment, I got a Herx, very intense Herx reaction both times. And I just want to validate that if you are experiencing a Herx reaction, it is not fun. I'm with you. It sucks. It, it literally is awful. And... We don't want to stay there. We don't want to go back. We want to keep moving forward. We want to give ourselves the rest. We want to give ourselves the rest, the grace, the hydration in order to allow the body to cope a little bit better. Anything else you want to add in there, Chris? Just compassion. Always compassion. All right, everybody. As always, we will see you guys next Wednesday where we will be talking about, are you ready for it? Dun, dun, dun. The impact of diet on acne. We'll see you then. Thanks for hanging out with us this week on the Clear Skin Chronicles. We'll see you next Wednesday with a brand new episode. Remember to subscribe to the show and drop us a review. Sending glowing vibes your way, Katie and Chris.